is a quick work God is doing in our midst. There is a mighty work He's doing in our midst. How many of you can see that the spirit of excellence and honor has rested upon a generation? Some of you, it's just a matter of time. In the next two, three years, you'll be controlling different mountains. But you see, the truth is, we will not be surprised when the onus of responsibilities will rest upon our shoulders. Because we started taking responsibility for a generation long before now. The easiest way to rule a people is to take responsibility for them. When every other person is conveniently given an excuse, the easiest way to rule among men, take responsibility for their challenge. Begin to consider yourself as the reason why things are not working out. And suddenly all the partnerships of Zion will strengthen your arm to become the solution to their predicament. You first commanded that responsibility spiritually. So it was necessary physically for such an honor to be placed on your shoulders. Today I will share something with us that I believe will change our lives and bless us. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Scripture began to speak in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. It says, looking unto Jesus. And Akazo, let's try and read together at the count of three. One, two, three, go. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher waits. This portfolios, author and finisher, intentionally was used. They said, this is synonymous to saying Alpha and Omega, author and finisher. So if anybody wants to be successful as regarding the ordinance of God for their life, scripture says you should look unto the one who has become an example. So looking unto Jesus, who is what? The author, the beginning, the finisher, the ending of what? Come on, come on. Of what? So it is our, but they use Jesus as a recommendation. Look unto Jesus. It is our faith. It is what will, you will be implicated in the matter. It involves your own belief too. But he says, your reference is Jesus. Not a man of God. Not a prophet. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I want to show somebody a mighty deliverance tonight. Let's read together. One, two, go again. He says, who for the joy that was set before him. Can you tell somebody for the joy that was set before him? First, they say, look unto Jesus. Learn from this standard. And while contemplating the formula of Jesus, we began to see that the only way Jesus could overcome the lost in the world and carry the body as regarding his ordination. The Bible says that cross that is his purpose, the only way he could carry it is that he saw a joy that was set before him. There is a glory that the father allowed his eyes to have a glimpse of. So anytime the temptations come well in, anytime discouragement knocks on the door, his strength was if he remembers the glory that is ahead, if he successfully carries out this mission. There is too much distraction in the world that if a man is not equipped with the knowledge of the glory that is set before him, you will bow before Babylon. There is too much within the cosmos, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These things are very heavy on the soul of a man. You don't know the lust that binds the cord, the cord of lust that can bind the heart of a man. It's very heavy. It's hard to say you love God when there are so many things that are calling your attention in a generation. Both male and female, boys or girls, man or woman alike there is a common pressure on everybody and they say the standard who is jesus if you look unto him he says it is for the sake of the joy that was set before him there is something inside his future that gave him strength for his now and if you don't have a way to find fellowship with the details about your future about your inheritance in god there are many temptations the strength to say no to will not be in you for many of the times, ah, it is the same formula that the intelligence in the cosmos is built around. So a child does not like school, but for the joy that is set before him. 
for the hope that the end of this stress of school is a joy that is before him you will go through the rigor and the stress of the educational system not because you like it now they have shown you a picture of something that is before you i tell you why you find yourself oscillating spiritually why you are up today down tomorrow your eyes have not seen what is ahead of you if you see that thing you will find out in the face of the greatest temptation your strength will come from the knowledge of what your overcoming can do for you in your tomorrow many of the days it will not be that the sin is not interesting it will be that compared to the interest of this sin versus the things your eyes have seen so he says that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hand has handled of the word of truth is these things we commit to you this is why they came to a point where they say i am persuaded nothing else my eye has seen something there is something that is above everything in the cosmos a car is important please sit down sir a car is important very good but there is something that can buy a car and money is that thing you are hungry as hungry as you are when you go to the market and you need food as important as it is it is not the zenith of value something called currency money has more value than food they attach a particular value of money to that food you are looking for you want car you get money get it you want food get money get it what do you get when you want money because everything needs something that is above it to bow to it what do you need to make money make obeisance to you what do you need that money pays attention to these are the things we contemplate about tonight and part of where your greatest strength will come from it is the energy that is only domiciled in the knowledge of the hope that is set before you there are many temptations you are going to walk out of not because you have strength in the moment is that you considered your glorious future the future is a revelation God showed you. I will share some things with us today and I believe it will bless us. Can you bow your head one minute and ask the Lord, open my eyes tonight. I give you absolute, absolute permission. Shift systems, shift ideologies, shift belief systems. Make me a wonder to my generation. When I said we should pray, I meant it. There's a state of heart. Only then can you receive the marching orders of Zion. All intelligent farmers, all intelligent farmers, they know that it is a waste of effort to throw seeds on the ground. You must prepare the ground first. They know that the heavens must move before we make any step until the clouds gather, until they empty themselves. Then we can go to the land and till it until we have set the land in preparation. Then the seed can rest. The word of the Lord is the seed for your destiny tonight. And that word, that word will not have impact until the state of the land has been altered it will be altered and then the seed can land the cares of life can choke the impact of your delivery tonight and so you must by yourself carry your heart like an intelligent farmer and walk on it oh god my heart Are you talking to God even if I have that posture of your heart for only five minutes I'm satisfied because fire will come upon that kind of heart that's all you need the right angulation the right alignment and Zion will impregnate your soul with bodies Oh, 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 oh. 
the character of this divine being in Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10 scripture began to speak about one of his character he says declaring the end from the beginning so before it even starts God will talk the end first why you know how it will end you will use the strength of the end to go through all the process the process will not be palatable but there is strength in the knowledge of the end in Job chapter 8 verse 7 he says though thy beginning be small yet thy latter end shall be greatly increased he uses the knowledge of your end to strengthen you in your process so you will say all the days of my appointed time I will wait until my change comes I might not be it yet but all the years of my appointed time I will wait there is strength in the knowledge of the end we know how it will end at the end of the day jesus prevailed at the end we stood as priest and king in the new jerusalem this is why there's nothing satan can do that can discourage us again we know how the story will end oh, 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 oh. Jesus hallelujah please you may be seated God bless you our heart is set now so this teaching might not be long but something will happen to your heart if you paid attention to the testimonies you would know you would know that of course God has power to change anything anytime number two you will know that God is here you will also know that the process is more important to God than the destination. It is the process that makes you. That's where you learn every skill. And you learn how to wield the horn of your ordination inside your process. It is in the process that you learn how to tame the anger of the bear. Because one day you will stand before an uncircumcised Philistine. No matter how ferocious Goliath is, he's not as fierce as a wild animal. And in your process, you run against a wild animal. It catch against you too. And you did not know why God allow an animal to look upon you with violence. You would think God abandoned you, but he was teaching your hand how to war. All of the process is to prepare you for that one Kairos moment. David's Kairos moment was Goliath. Goliath was a challenge, but for David it was an opportunity. Because your preparation makes the challenge of your generation an opportunity for you. The day everybody begins to complain, then you know why God allows sickness to affect you like that. 
you will realize you have more insights about the healing virtues because you were sick you went to look for it for yourself while searching for solution you did not only come out with help for yourself you became a source of help for others the process is more important the process is the most painful part of any journey arriving is very sweet but the way to navigate through the hurdles and it is the process that is more important than the destination I'm begging somebody today to celebrate their process you may not like it but appreciate God for counting you worthy to go through this kind of school in the spirits for some of you the educational material that is necessary to civilize you in the way of your ordination it cannot be found in any temple so it will be necessary for the spirit to suck you into the wilderness only there like John the Baptist only there would you receive strange lectures by the tour guide himself and when you come out you will become a strange man to a generation it was supposed to Michael Ropo that said you can never have anything for the generation that civilized you if your education is coming from Facebook WhatsApp you're going online to go and check messages and cram it you have nothing for your generation your ears must hear a voice your eye must see something when you are attempting to describe what you saw by yourself the things your ears hear a spirit will be following that thing you are saying to confirm your words with signs and wonders we may talk very bogusly we may make very heavy statement and articulate terms but the holy ghost only confirms truth and the truth is your track record what you are in the secret with God you can come out openly and be talking heavy things the only God will Holy Ghost will only confirm who you are and it is your journey the process that makes you who you are you can pretend to look like a destination appear like it dress like it then you find out dressing was never a part you can wear a t-shirt and carry the hope of a generation Let me show you something very quickly. In John chapter 21 verse 15. Precious Holy Spirit. Give us grace tonight. In the book of John chapter 21 verse 15. I want us all to read together. To be projected. Everybody. I need you to see what I'm about to show you. At the count of three. One, two, three, go. So when they had dined. Jesus said to Simon Peter. Simon son of jonas lovest thou me more than this feed my lambs jesus has raised people stayed with them for nothing less than three and a half years taught them the ways of the spirit it was around them day and night and when they crucified jesus everybody scattered and peter went back to the fishing boats that he inherited from his fathers and he mended his net and went back to the fishing enterprise. He recruited other disciples into this new found franchise. And it was not enough for that. This was the same Peter that Jesus told him that upon you, the rock, Peter. Your real name is Simon Barjona. Where did Peter come from? It was a revelation that only God could have taught a man. And that is not a product of any education system. The, the, the priest in the temple has no knowledge that Jesus is the son of God. And so when they found the knowledge that was not a product of, of exegesis, Jesus says, Hi, it means that you have a window with, the, with, with God in heaven. And it's the Father that showed you this one. Upon the ground of this revelation, your name has changed. So you will no longer be called Simon Bajona. You will be called Peter. And Peter means the rock. Upon this rock is a firm foundation. I will build my church. That person that was hailed like that, the Bible said he denied Jesus in the heat of the moment that I don't, I, I don't know this man and Jesus came you will expect Jesus I'm bringing somebody's deliverance already you will expect Jesus to come and say Haba Peter why, why did you betray me like this but when Jesus came back from the underworld and he found out all his loyalists and his disciples have scattered into many other ventures of life that was where he discovered that there is a lost in the world. That if you don't love God above that thing, it will draw your attention. Everybody has gone back to one thing or another. 
and even those who walked very close to God, the powers of Mammon has commanded their allegiance and they went back to the various things that they were called from before Jesus even started with them. So this is how easy it is to be born again and yet Egypt calls your attention. You are not alone. You are not the only one that gave your life to Christ and then you found yourself trying to go back to the old ways. The children of Israel came out of Egypt in the Exodus and the taste of cucumber and garlic was a strong affinity for them. And they vowed to God that they rather go back to Egypt and have cucumber and garlic than to be free men in the desert. And you don't know that the desert is your journey to your promised land. The momentary stress momentary difficulty has made many people turn their back and say if this is what a lot of people entered this business of the spirit thinking that all the lofty promises that people who don't know God told them ah, brother you are suffering I know a God that can affect your bank account and if you know the matters in the courts of eternity that carry weight your bank account is your list of your challenge and if spirits want to give you money they will not give you means they will, they will put something on your head that will make your cup to begin to overflow. So even when God wants to help a man, he says, I will give thee power to get wealth. He didn't say power to make wealth. It is very hard to make a coup. The process is very tedious. You will suffer if you want to make a coup by yourself. Or carry 15 era, you will buy it without stress. So God allows the children of the world with all of their merchandise they use their years to labor and then he creates the power to get it not make it to get it they build a stage thinking they will perform on it and they were building your stage all along the power to get wealth they were building a technology thinking it will facilitate their way of life and generals came up and dominated it the power to get wealth and so it became very clear that the power in the cosmos can command the allegiance of man. And so Jesus came back from the underworld and discovered that his loyalists have pledged allegiance to a strange God. And he came back to Peter and he diagnosed what is wrong. And that is a question I intend to answer with the teaching tonight. What is wrong? A lot of people here are telling themselves that if only I will be blessed and have money, I will be focused on God. Unfortunately, the reason for your spiritual challenge is not money. And it is when you get money that your true color will come out. Money is a revealer. Men have been humble until God gave them money. Then their walking step changed. A man has been faithful to one wife until God multiplied his substance. And he realized that all along, this, is, this woman is not my taste. <laughs> A man has been very comfortable taking water and blessing God now that God has multiplied his substance. He wants to stay with wine. Some of you here that are dating some boys, you will need the eye of the spirits to tell if this guy, if his heart will be inclined towards you when his salvation comes. So in John chapter 21 verse 15, Jesus came diagnosing what was wrong. And what was wrong according to the insight of divine spirits. He says, Simon, Barjona, I called you Peter before now, but you have lost your name. So you went back to Simon Barjona. You were the one I called Peter just now. And I referred to you as Peter all the days I was with you. Now I found out you have abandoned your ordination. I'm describing somebody's life story. And until you are humble to see yourself in it, you will not know that the light is for you. How did you go back to where I called you from? How did you lose the name that came through a season of consecration? Some of you, there were immortal alignment. God allowed your feet to cross paths with certain people at certain seasons of your life. So that a weight in Zion can come upon your soul. And upon that weight, you did some business in that season and secured a name for yourself. And when the immortals were saluting you with that name, you turned your back on your ordination. And Jesus came to Peter and he says, Simon Barjona, this is the person that is supposed to be called the rock. Peter. Peter has gone back. The only identity he has was the son of a fisherman. Simon Barjona. 
Where has Satan taken you back to? What name was secured for you in Zion, but you don't have the strength to remain? It is the process that differentiates men at the end of the day. Everybody, can I share something with us? One of the people who shaped my mind, I was studying something about him lately and he said he is excited about anything that is hard. Anything that is difficult is exciting for him. He said the reason not too many people will do it. Know that that sleep that you like, a whole generation is sleeping. And only few men wake up, woke up in the night and beckoned upon the attention of immortals. And they did it today, did it tomorrow, did it a day after tomorrow. And you think that in one month time, you and them will command the same attention in the courts of Zion? You think it was a joke that God decides to make them a face to a generation? Look for the hard part in this matter and stay there. You will find out that your journey is more important. It is your journey. That's where many people turn their back and say, I cannot do it again. And only few men continue to walk and say, Lord, ah, oh, sorry. I've not given a title to what I'm trying to describe, right? Let's look for a title for it. Let's, let's call it. You know, we need to call it a, a heavy name. <laughs> I'm trying to describe the motions of the celestials. I'm trying to describe their movements so that we can take dressing from when they move. If you understand the way of impact, it is in aligning to the motions of the celestials. I have told us just now and I will reiterate it. It is only until heaven moves. That's when you too, you are supposed to replicate the same move that you see heaven do. Because if you run ahead of heaven, you'll be exposed. Your defense is only by your alignment. So in the exodus, and the exodus was not about leaving Egypt physically to Canaan physically. The exodus was a typology of the story of a man's life from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's marvelous son. The whole story of the exodus was a divine message to give voice to what the peculiar challenges of all saints will be. And so part of the challenge of the exodus is you cannot move until the cloud move. When the cloud move, then Israel can move. You can't move at night until the pillar of fire has advanced. And these motions are by the heavens. Only when the celestial bodies moved, then earth, earthlings also took measures. They took dressing from the motions of the celestials. So he says, Simon, Barjona, lovest thou me more than this? I know you love your profession as a fisherman. I know it's something you can fall back to any time. But I have found out that in the heat of the moment, this thing has your heart more than everything I vested upon you. So the only thing Jesus was trying to achieve was not to collect fishing from Peter. No, you can hold your fishing. But he says, love me more than this. So the question that the immortal brought to Peter was, Simon Barjona, lovest thou me more than this. Please give me my scripture. In this life, you will love something. Every one of us will have one attraction or another. For some of you, it will be your children. For some of you, it will be your job. Some of you, it's your appearance. You love the way you look. Some of you, you love the sound of your voice. Some of you, it will be your wife, your husband. You will find out something must catch a, a man's heart. There must be something that your heart will cling to. And the only interest of Zion is he says Simon son of Jonas lovest thou me more than this I want you to take one minute and ask yourself this question Ono son of Obed lovest thou me more than ministry grace Son of Godwin, lovest thou me more than marriage? When anything comes to your mind, when anything comes around you, and God finds out you have gone back to your old ways, he is not coming to criticize you for what you are doing. 
He's investigating what love called your heart. The motions of the celestials. There's something I will share about very quickly. There's so much conversation on the Holy Spirit in the New Testament church. So much focus. And he is the focus of the New Testament church. But while we were doing that, we lost touch with a very important ministry. The ministry of angels. I know if I take a sample survey right now, I know many people will think angels are no longer relevant because the Holy Ghost is doing the work. But the things I will share today is to build consciousness so that the reality of the ministry of these beings will become real in your life. The Holy Ghost is given to you as an inheritance and salvation to live inside you. Angels are given to you as an inheritance before even salvation to minister to you. Your ministers are ministering spirits, not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is your counselor. The Holy Ghost gives you counsel and he gives you utterance. When you make that utterance and declare those words, it is angels that obeyed what you have said. The Holy Ghost is inside. Angels are outside. And if you pay attention to what I'm sharing today, you will find out you have been ignoring the ministry of angels around your life. And even when you say, let it be done, you, have been, you are imagining that there's one, there's one spirit that looks like air that will leave you and go and do the thing and come back. But he is a government. He is the same one that is sitting on the throne. He is that same one that sits upon the throne of my heart. And when he speaks in the courts of heaven, there are angels that carry out his bidding. And if he speaks through my heart, so there are angels that carry it out. You will remember in the book of Luke, scripture said, when Jesus had come out of the baptism of John, and the Holy Ghost descended upon him like a dove, he was led by this same Holy Ghost into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted and he was hungry, that angels came to minister to Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus told Nathaniel that I saw you under a tree. And Nathaniel said, ah, certainly you are the Messiah. And Jesus says, is it just because I told you I saw you under a tree? that you are calling me a messiah wait until you see the heavens open and angels ascending and descending upon the son of man jesus attributed the might and the supernatural display of his ministry to the ministry of angels wait until you see angels ascending and descending so even when the woman with the issue of blood touched him he said virtue left me and virtue is a category of angels on the cross when they make mockery of him and the scribes and pharisees casted as passion on his reputation he says i can tell the father and he can release legions of angels so his defense is by angels even jesus the son of god his safety and his protection was the ministry of angels the cover of a child of god are angelic creatures it is the Holy Ghost that is inside you. And even when you grieve the Holy Ghost, and when the Holy Ghost is grieved, it is because of the wall and the cover and the shield. So you remember the scripture that says, if you break the shield, the serpent will strike. What is your shield? The ministry of angels. So he says he will give his angels charge over you. Over you, lest you dash your feet upon a stone. In your moment of temptation, your escape route is the ministry of angels. <laughs> you can decide that you want to sin. For some of you, that the jealousy of God is towards you. Even when that day you decide that you want to sin and compromise, maybe fornication, and you plan that only, only you will be in the house and you invited the lady, says she should come. You have made up your mind. And angels peeped into <laughs> the silent contemplations of your depraved heart. And strange angels quickening the brother from nowhere to come and visit. The brother said, I just didn't think about you. I said, make I come. <laughs> the ministry of angels. Spiritual things are only commanded by realizing them. If you are not conscious of any spiritual reality, 
you will remain oblivious to their existence. And the day you will begin to walk accurately in the ministry of angels is when you become conscious of their existence. I'm talking about the motions of the celestials. And part of the celestials, I will make reference to tonight before we go, are angels. Every call, every assignment, every ordination, every kind of ministry is started first from the courts of heaven. So there are angels that minister in the presence of God. And one of those angels are Gabriel. When Gabriel appeared before Zachariah, the father of John, and he told Zachariah that a child will be born in this your old age, and his name shall be called John. And Zachariah doubted and says, how can these things be? When Gabriel was going to address the unbelief of an, an, a, a, a Hebrew priest, he looked at him and he says, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence. The reason why is Gabriel that appeared to Zachariah, because Zachariah is a priest physically. Only a priest spiritually will appear to you. Zachariah is a man that stands in the presence. That's the role of a priest. He stands on behalf of Israel in the presence. One angel too that has the statue in immortality to stand in the presence of the consuming fire. He's the one that ministers in a similar ministry like you. He's the one that will come to you. So in the battle of Jericho, Joshua is the captain of the physical host of the Lord. The creature that came in immortality, he introduced his credentials. He says, I am the captain of the host of God. Is captain that comes for captain. There are only four names of angels that were exposed or that were released in the 66 books of the scripture that we have. But if you stumble upon books like the book of Enoch, you will see other names. But I want to trust the wisdom of the patriarchs, why they didn't include that book in the Bible. Just because, I'm saying this just because if anybody here wants to go and start diving into strange books, you may come out with strange doctrines. So I still, I still advise that stay within the boundaries of what has been prescribed. Huh? There are only four names, nomenclatures of creatures in immortality that was exposed. One of the first that was exposed it was the ministry of Michael. Then you have Gabriel. Then you have Lucifer. And you have Abaddon or Apollyon. And he is the angel, the angel of the bottomless pits. He is the captain of the armies of the bottomless pits. That was the only crank in darkness that they explained their anatomy. They said they have the wings of locusts, the hair of a woman, the teeth of a lion. And they have a captain called Apollyon. That the order, the allegiance of these angels, these creatures that were reserved in outer darkness, it, it, they are commanded by a captain called Apollyon. And in the day where Apollyon will move, it is Daniel that told us, I think in Daniel chapter 7, he says, in, that, in those last days, Michael will rise. When a captain, a prince in darkness, will invade time, the host of heaven too will release a prince. So when Gabriel wanted to speak about Daniel, about Michael, he says, one of your chief princes, chief princes, one of, one of, emphasis on one of. So there are other princes. And when one third of the host of heaven fell, one third of uncountable, one third of his times in mathematics, one over three times uncountable is still uncountable. And I have a question for you. Where are all the fallen angels today? Where do you think they are? And what do you think they are currently doing? In Genesis chapter 6, we saw an ungodly expenditure that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair. And they took wives for themselves of whomever they please. And they began to raise children that the scripture called mighty men of old, of renown. As at them, Strength and might is in brute strength. The definition of might is in brute strength. So 
The advantage that those spiritual creatures can give to their offspring is to make them giants. Because battles in those days were fought with swords and horses and spears. So the more physically advantaged you are, you will survive wars. So when they wanted to give advantages to their offspring, they made them men of mighty stature. But these creatures of rebellious descent are still within us. And they don't give birth to giants anymore. They have changed the game. Now, might is an intellectual prowess. So you are going to find a creature looking like you, having your same appearance. Mind you, I'm still speaking about the motions of the celestials. So every time angels want to enter time, enter the world of men, they take bearing and appearance that are exactly like men. It was Abraham that sighted three men, three men, and he ran towards them and says, come and take some level of refreshment in my house. And scripture made reference to these guys as angels. In Genesis chapter 6, scripture says the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair. It's because the angels came like normal human beings. That's why ladies accepted to marry them. No lady in this world will accept any being with wings just showed up and said, ah, sweetie. <laughs> Let me give you a little peep into the angelic rank. It's not every angel that appear like a man. It is only when they enter the physical world that they shape shift into their desired nature. And it is because that is, that is the protocol of the physical world. There are many things I want to speak about, about angels. But, okay, we have small time. Can I continue in this line of discussion? Oh, the feedback is not encouraging. <laughs> Scripture referred to the chariots of fire that came to carry Elijah from time as angels. Elisha was trying to re, uh, calm the nerve of his servant when the servant is scared. And Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes so that he may see. And when they opened the eyes of this young man, he saw the chariots of fire around about the mountains. And he says, for they that are with us are more than them that are against us. If your eyes can be opened and you see why you have lived to this age, you will know the number of battles that happen every night that you close your eyes and sleep. There were many nefarious creatures that tried to cut short your life. And Michael will rise and say, there is a purpose on this one. And he declares, his decrees and his, his confirmations is he shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. There are ordinations on his life and until he performs it, you evil creature, I want to show you why men survive. They survive because of the clashes and the jealousy of God that is towards them. So, they made reference to chariots and call them angels what is the meaning of the word angel angel just means messenger and the word angel translated to english just means messenger and we have spiritual messengers and physical messengers i am one of the messengers of god and so when you hear people introduce people last time apostle michael Rupo was here he introduced me as the angel over this house. And I know some of you were annoyed and say, Kai, Apostle, why will you entertain this kind of pride? <laughs> Your problem is because you think spiritual things are communicated by English. Angel just means messenger. And any creature that carries out the assignment of God is a messenger. Whether his, his form looks like an animal or he looks like a human being. Mind you, if you see Satan spiritually, you will not see a human being. Spiritually, his form is a serpent. And so, growth in the spiritual realm is to what level you have attained the statue and the image of your reference. So, growth, even in the kingdom of light, is to what extent you have evolved into the natures of Christ. So, if they want to check how old you are spiritually, they check to what extent do you re resemble Christ. Growth and age in the realm of the spirit has nothing to do with size. In fact, if you have had reason to transverse the realms before, 
you will find out that one of the most wicked creatures are the small demons. You can see a very big spirit and all he'll be doing is <sighs> you, you'll be scared thinking that this thing can do something. Then you'll find out he's just making that sound for like five minutes. But I've stumbled upon a, a, a creature. The size of that creature is like this. From the ground, it's like this. And they don't walk alone. They walk in company, a colony, like a soldier ant. I saw them following a brother on campus. I saw them following him many. And the uh, assignment of this spirit is to make you very busy doing nothing. They'll just be the movement that they move is like flashes of light. So the thing will just be very confusing and twisted. They, they looked so many like a soldier ant, but they were small, small like this. And I found out the brother was a very busy person doing nothing. He would just sit down. Have you seen busy bodies before? Have you seen busy bodies before? I'm giving you their diagnosis. They, they are not, they are not, you know, you just, you just sit down like this and say, He stand up and go and off that light. I'll come back. When you sit down, that I want to study the world, and you find out something is telling you to go and warm water quickly. Why just just go and warm? The idea is to remove you from this thing that you want to do. Anything that is productive is to keep you busy. At the end of your days, you claim you are busy, but you didn't strike any relevant chord. And I tried by all means to stumble upon a nomenclature for these spirits. And God didn't give me a name for them. That was when I found out that names are rewards spiritually. There are many things that has not earned names for themselves. Once upon a time, a tall guy took me. And they were showing me one church. The church is under the ground. They took me and we were going under the ground. And we went. You see, the things I'm saying now is very hard to picture it. That you are joining into into the earth and it's a church and people were inside the church but as far as the immortals were concerned the, uh, the effect of different civilizations have covered that church it's under the earth and they went to show me why they were showing me I heard the voice of a strange spirit because his voice came with fear and he says my name is before he could say it the spirit that was before me, that was leading me, turned and said, God rebuke you immediately. God rebuke you. And the uh, air of that creature vanished immediately. So I learned that it is important for spirits to give men their nomenclature. And many of these spirits that come to you and say, my name is Sukumbus. Uh, <laughs> if you know how hard it is to secure a name spiritually, you will know why not every angel also gave or have right to declare a name. Many of them don't even have a name yet. They are just called angels. Mind you, the Bible said one of the rewards of Jesus is that the Father gave him a name. At the end of this, his hard labor, he gave him a name that was above every other name. And if you are a student of the prophets, you will know that the end of your overcoming in time is that they will give you a name that is on a white stone. And only you will know that name. And that name is part of your reward. So, the Inkechi your father is calling you right now, it's not your name. They only gave you that name to identify you inside time. So that they will not be saying, if they want to call you. Your name is a reward you are going to get eventually. And it's only people that have names. It's those names that will be captured in the Lamb's Book of Life. When they call that name, you will know you are the one they were referring to. And so, they, they are not permitted to have names. Just in case Satan is giving you encounters and is whispering funny names to you, the moment you call that name, it resonates in the earth realm. And this is how demons receive worship. They receive worship by becoming conscious, by entering the consciousness of man. Once you become conscious of anything, it has become a life around you. Can I share something with you? Even God even God uses this principle. So scripture says, he that will come to him must first believe that he is. That believing that he is is that you have become conscious of God.
my name is Abraha. You will die. That spirit wants you to wake up and remember that name. When you get up, I don't know you. Your name is not in the Bible. God does not tell me about you. You are not real. If you just meditate on the name and you now go to all night and say, every spirit of a brother, as you are calling that name, you are chanting it. And all of a sudden, from the covens and from the, 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 the abyss of hell, you are summoning creatures that have no reason to enter time. Because they impregnated the hearts of men with their identities. And God never told you this one. It's like God coming to Adam and saying, who told you that you are naked? Where did you learn this one from? Some of you, please, I'm bringing a deliverance in the name of prophetic ministry. And say they put you on, they place you on seven day fasting. And say, wake up every night and pray against the spirit of Sukumbus. Check from, there, there are too many spirits to know. Don't be adding unnecessary things. <laughs> Somebody text me, text me and say, sir, how does one deal with the spirit of Sukumbus and Inkumbus? I say, wow, wow, wow. With, with this knowledge that you have, you are the only one that can answer this question. Sukumbus and Inkus. And it's amazing how they gave themselves old Roman names. Can I share something with you? Can somebody shout Jesus? Jesus! You know what you just did? You just destabilized the air. You, you dislodge any strange government that attempted to institute an authority over this space. When you chanted that name, Jesus, the authorities in that name found expression. So whether you are shouting the name and saying, I bind you, Sukumbus, every spirit of... <sighs> For those of you who are close to me, the last very serious deliverance craze that we had, you knew that the spirit was desperately trying to tell me his name. And you saw me ignoring his name. He wants, he wants me to address him. But I chose to let him know that he's not real. No, no, we didn't give you this name. You don't have any name. Name and rewards. And you are the only one thinking it's Sukumbus you are calling. You think it's a sound you are pronouncing. There is a mystery behind every name the spirit calls itself. So for everybody here who would have one end time assignment or another, you are going to partner with Michael because in the last days, they say Michael will rise. And what scripture meant by he will rise is that his ministry will become effective in the earth. So you must be conscious of what creatures are with you. All through my, my time in Zaria, as I tarried with God's servant, as I attended the meetings, as I served, as I prayed for him, I made it a point of duty to pray for him. Can you imagine me praying for Apostle Joshua Selman? But that was the instruction God gave me then. And we'll wake up in the night, Lord, your servant, the grace must multiply. Upon meeting on Friday, let your hand move. While I was doing that, the angels that walk with him, you know the let me tell you something about Mount Zion. Upon Mount Zion, there are many things that they shared about there, but they also said there are innumerable company of angels. And innumerable means uncountable. Now, we have an estimate of 8 billion people in the world. 8 billion. So you can count the number of people that are in the world. But angels are uncountable. So even though you share one one angels for everybody, it will still remain. And what I'm trying to say is that there are many angels that don't have work. Just, they're just there. <laughs> For some people, there will be more than one angel that accompany them because of the weight of their call. For some, there are angels of fire that are making them day by day, even though they choose to fall, they will not give them the opportunity to sin. For some people, there are angels that must stand behind them or else death will devour them because of the sacredness of their ordination. So, warfare is always around them. The jealousy of God is tilted towards these ones. So, even while they are sleeping, there is warfare every moment around them. Mind you, Michael is not the only angel of war. 
when his reputation was declared, they called him one of your chief princes. So there are many different princes. One angel that was also an angel of war is the prince of the heir of Pasha. The strength of Gabriel could not withstand him because he was not an angel of light. Gabriel stands in the presence. When Gabriel comes, Gabriel has strength, quite all right, but his strength is to reveal the light of God to a people. The angel that plays a role that is similar to Gabriel is Lucifer, his light bearer. Because Lucifer too is the angel that stands in the presence. But you see, Michael is an angel of war. And they only gave us four names, four names. They gave two angels of war, one in darkness, one in light. And they gave two angels of the presence, one in light, one in darkness. And they said that in that day where Abaddon will lose out of the bottomless pit and plague the nations with his wickedness and wickedness will abound, the Bible says Michael will rise up. It is that day I'm trying to draw your consciousness to so that when the motions of the celestial start, you will not be left unguarded. When Michael moves, suddenly you will find the spirit of faith boiling in a generation. I was impressed by the faith of that young lady. You know, you poured water into that kerosene stove. But in that moment where you lighted at that, that matches, the battle, is, the battle has left your hand. It became the Lord's. Can I share something with you? There are angels that have power over the elements. They can manipulate fire, land, sea, and air. And there are angels that were made reference to when it was necessary to hold the four winds of the air. So they said, an angel. These ones, their ministry is to lord over the powers of the elements. And when Adam fell, Adam's original ordination is to have authority and dominion over the powers of the heavens and over the powers of the earth. But when he fell, they divided his inheritance into two portfolios. They gave one to a, a priest, one witness called Elijah, but it's only inside time, only inside time you will call him John the Baptist, because as far as heaven is concerned, whether he came in any body, it is a ministry, they were referring to Elijah. So Elijah was the one now who will have power over the powers of the air, so he can choose at will to say, at my command, I shut the heavens, it will not rain. And they gave another, Moses, powers over the elements of the earth. Adam had power over heavens and the earth, but when he fell, they divided his inheritance into two portfolios so that it would not fall into the hands of the adversary. And when the second Adam came, the two people that were holding the inheritance waiting for him, they came to present his office back to him. So all of a sudden you will find out that both the powers of the heaven and the powers of the earth when he resurrected, he says, all powers has been given unto me, both in heaven and on earth. So no matter where they hide that pot of affliction, bury it in any place, the land can judge them. You can command the earth and say, swallow them. These were the powers of Moses. He gathered his enemies and the earth swallowed them. His judgment was how he decreed things and the earth made obeisance to him. When, when the people came and rebelled against Moses, God just reminded him. It was Moses that took a rod, a plant, and kept the plant on the ground and he became a snake. These people had powers over the elements. But now the inheritance in the new covenant is not only powers over the elements, powers both in heaven and on earth. So, our time is fast spent. We're going to continue about the motions of the celestials next week. Let me find a way to tie it in a place where we can pray. So, God will make us conscious tonight, conscious of what creatures what spiritual creatures were given to help us fulfill destiny and for many of you you have been ignoring your angels since when i say your angel somebody's mind is already having a debate 
Let's shed a little light on that. When Peter was arrested, and when Herod locked up Peter, because he had already beheaded James, and it pleased the Jews, and now he has took another disciple, and he locked him up, and he was going to behead him the next day. Then he says, scripture says, the disciples prayed. And the answer of the prayer is an angel. And I speak to you about the early church, not the Old Testament. A mighty angel. And they gave us a salutation and a counsel. They say, be careful. For some have entertained angels unknowingly. Are you intelligent enough to know that I must meet angels today? Are you intelligent enough to recognize that that man, that man that gave you that advice in that bus was a creature in Zion? Are you intelligent enough to realize that that person that disappointed you and made you not to take that trip, that traveling, that traveling could be an intervention? Are you intelligent in the spirit enough to discern the movement of the celestials? For every time they enter into time, they take dressing immediately. They appear like us. No angel will fly with wings in the physical world. Every one of them will shape shift. They will shape shift into this form. And you can join shoulders with an angel and insult him. And he will say, Kai, if only you know. Where are those tonight whose eyes will be open? Like the servant of Elisha. And you will say, Lord, open my eyes so I will realize. They that are with me are more. They are more than those that are against me. Now you will know why a thousand will fall by your side. Ten thousand by your right hand side. But you have been guarded heavily by creatures in Zion. You will know why you are not alone. You will know why whether you go through the waters, it will not overflow. The Bible said in the New Testament that the Lord sent his angels and the shut mouths of the lions. In the old covenant, we didn't hear that there were angels inside the den with Daniel. But scripture says they were creatures that kept the mouth of a lion shut because a son of God was in a risk. And angels have been given charge to keep watch over you. Can you lift up your voice and ask the Lord to open our eyes? And you shall hear a voice from behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Open my eyes. In a world full of distraction, open my eyes. In a world full of fear, open my eyes. Oh, you are praying. point tonight Psalm 103 verse 20 one prayer point I show you a ministry that was carefully stolen from the body the ministry of angels ah, the day you become conscious of them all of a sudden you will realize that person that has been following you some of you you are walking and you literally feel like somebody always walks with you your attention I want to lead us in one prayer point and that's a prayer we pray as we go it's projected everybody let's read together one two go bless the Lord yea his what angels that excel in what that do his what hearkening unto the voice of his what 
so the word of God is carried out by angels I shall not die but live it's a word of God but it's angels that will make that word come to pass he says hearkening unto the voice of his word see what he said again bless the Lord yea his angels that excel in strength that do his commandments that do his commandments that do his commandments what has God said concerning your life can you declare right now what has God said concerning you concerning your destiny it will take a partnership it will take a partnership Sending angels, you are releasing angels. 